Hi, I'm Hovind Hilton. This is Best Seat in the House, and today I'm with Lenny S. What up? First off, I want to congratulate you on being honored by Fortune Magazine. Thank you, man. For your impact in the culture that. and all that. I appreciate that, man. I'm just working hard, trying to keep a job, man. It feels good to be acknowledged, though, don't you? Um, yeah, it feels good to be acknowledged, I guess, for me, to inspire the people coming after me to know that this is something possible, you know, something that, you know, an uneducated guy from the Bronx could come and, you know, and kind of like work his way up to this position or stature or status or whatever you want to say, you know what I mean? Talk a little bit about coming from the Bronx and like being that hip hop <clears throat> is where it started in the Bronx. Hip hop started in the Bronx. It was hip -hop created in the Bronx. <laughs> Perfected in Brooklyn. As long as we clear on that, right? Perfected in Brooklyn. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's all love. It's no, all love. But no, no, but it I, definitely I, started in the Bronx. It, we, we wouldn't have this culture if it wasn't for the Bronx. Absolutely. Being around and being a part of that. And I take a lot of pride in that, man. I take a lot of pride in, in coming from uh, the best city in the world, New York City. Uh, you know, the city that, you know, it makes or breaks you. And, you know, for the most part, if you're from here, it's going to make you. And it's going to mold you into the person that you are. Um, whether that be, you know, positive, aggressive, you know, strong, like, you know, just very, very forward thinking, uh, taking initiative to like damn near feel like you could take on the world. So being from the Bronx, you know, it meant a lot for me and I, and I understood that from a young age, you know, coming up in a single parent home and just, you know, watching my moms work really hard and, and my grandmother, you know, who both held me down and just striving to make sure that I, you know, do everything I can to, you know, just kind of maneuver out of whatever stereotypical hood, ghetto, you know, tales end, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. Um, and I knew at a young, very young age I wanted to be in the music business, so I set a goal in my mind from, uh, from 11, 12, 13 years old and, and had my heart set on being in the entertainment business and, uh, you know, I did it. A great job at it, I might add. No, thank you, man. <clears throat> now, you started out on the street team. How does somebody work their way up from the street team, the early 90s bad boy days, to where you are now at SVP? Basically, again, I, I always want to revert back to the goal. You know what I'm saying? Like I had the goal of, I knew I wanted to make records. I mean, as I got a little older and as I reached my teenage years and after high school, when I was learning about the business a little bit, you know, from afar, I always realized like, I want to, I want to be in an A&R department. I want to work and I want to make records with artists. Um, and since I didn't have any credentials to actually do that or approach a record company and say, you know, let me make records with your artists, I figured I'd start from the bottom, which was street team, which was, you know, hitting them streets and, 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 and handing out product, which anybody could do. Yeah. I figured I'd do that, work my way inside the door, work my way inside the office, snoop around, get to know <laughs> people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Learn the departments, learn who I needed to speak to in order to move to that position. And um, I was lucky. Um, I got to work with a guy named Hip Hop, who was like the only A&R at Rockefeller at the time. And he embraced me and, you know, put me under his wing. And then also, you know, Damon and Jay gave me the shot to do my own album because we needed the help. And yeah. we were working on multiple albums. And, you know, obviously Hip Hop was one guy. So me wanting to pursue, you know, and having interest in that field, they gave me the opportunity right away. And that's one of the things that I'll always remember, love, and you know, acknowledge about Rockefeller is that is the opportunity, yeah. and that's why I try to give so many people opportunity if I can, you know, even if it is a shot for free at first, or even if it is a paid gig, it's really the opportunity. You're gonna make what you want out of it. Definitely. They were giving me, you know, they gave me an opportunity and a shot, and I made, you know, what I wanted out of it. With today's climate, a lot of kids now tend to think that the only thing they can be are rappers or the singers. To somebody who wants to break in behind the scenes, kind of like how you are, what advice would you give them? My advice I give somebody trying to break in the entertainment business is knowing what you want to do. Knowing that you don't have to just be an artist. Knowing that you can be an executive. You could be in a radio promo department. You could be a video director, photographer, uh, hairstylist. Doesn't matter. Knowing what you want to do, setting that goal, meeting the appropriate people who are in that department or in that field, developing and building great relationships and then utilizing those relationships to then work hard and get yourself your own position that you're looking for, that you desire. You're known for your amazing work in the music industry. You're also known for your 
love for sneakers. <laughs> yeah, you're also known for your love of photography. Tell me about how those three things inner work and which one is closest to your heart? Um, man, they all are. Uh, those three, as well as, um, uh, I like culinary skills and culinary oh, yeah. school. Yeah, oh, yeah, I like cooking. Yeah, so, you know, I'll spend my day off if I have one. You know, watching the Food Network and watching <laughs> watching Guy, Guy Fieri, yeah, man, and watching uh, diners, drives, and diving. You know what I'm saying, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's what I do, and, and photography as well. Music is first and foremost. You know what I mean? Music is something I heard from a very young age and knew I wanted to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the photography as well. Um, ask anybody I went to high school with, anybody I you know knew growing up. I always kept a little camera on me, um, and for no reason. It's not nothing that I foresaw. Now, what I, you know, what I'm doing now, that I was like, oh, I'm gonna do this so that later on, it w it was just about capturing the moment. Um, hairstyles change, clothing changes, you know, everything evolves and everything progresses, and I wanted to be able to capture that, you know, bags, everything. Right now, I, I even buy old magazines, you know, from the '70s yeah, and that. '60s, yeah, just that. to look at the ads and to see, you know, like, um, you know, just the imagery from back then. So I always kept the camera on my hand. So again, that was something from before I was, you know, had any success in the music business. Uh, sneaker, sneakers and cereal came from me being, <laughs> came from me being, not to say poor, right? I mean, I was all right. I wasn't yeah. obviously well off, but I mean, my mother and my grandmother, 100%, you know, took care of me. Um, but if I got a pair of sneakers for the year, I mean, my mom, that was the pair of sneakers I had until yeah. until they Next they year. ran out. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? Until, whatever, six months, eight months, whatever. So I got them red troops or whatever it was. <laughs> that's what I had. It was no, so cereal too. Like I never had no cereals. Like I would go to other friends' houses that were well off and they have like a variety of 25. <laughs> yeah, so like, now I have like 30 cereals for no reason. Like just just to have them. Cause, favorite, favorite cereal off the top of your head. Oh man, uh, Captain Crunchberries. Captain Crunchberries. Yeah. Favorite but, uh, sneaker, if you only could wear one sneaker for the rest of your life? Uh, Jordan 3. Jordan 3. Oh. Yeah, uh, cement first, cement? first, okay, yeah, 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 black. So yeah, so sneakers as well. I was like, when I get older, and it was these two guys on my block. I'm gonna be honest with you, Jerry and Lenny uh, had the same name as me. Uh, Jerry and Lenny were just two guys who like they used to work at the Bronx Zoo, and you know they were teenagers, and I was a kid, mm. and they would come out in the freshest of the flyest shit ever, man. And I just I I looked up to them guys so much. It sounds a little corny, but like no, they just they would switch up. They would in the morning they would go out with their basketball sweats and sneakers and they go to the park and play ball. They'll come back, they'll change and then go to like you know whatever they go to the movies or whatever. Yeah. Come back in, change again. Mm. And they, you know they had Kill like them. flight jackets and they had the whatever you know like Oakleys or you know whatever sneakers that were out at the time. Like yeah. they had them in different colors and they changed up their style of dressing and you know. I just always wanted that. It's like I just wanted to be, I want to be fresh. Like I want to, you know, have, so now I end up becoming the sneaker head and I can't not have any sneaker that comes out. It's a, it's a terrible curse I'm inflicting it is. too. It's, it's, it's sickness. It's a, it's a sick, it's, nah, it's, a sickness. it's a bad one too. Yeah. We've all seen the music business change dramatically, sale wise, the amount of money that's into it. You being from the glory, like the 96 Bulls, Rockefeller mm -hmm. days mm -hmm. to now, how have you personally adapted and the companies you work with adapted to the new change in the music business, like streaming and shifting? Um, we've adapted because we've always evolved, you know what I mean? And, and, and I speak for myself and, I, you know, I don't usually like to speak for the company as a yeah. whole. But I mean, generally speaking, you know, I have been there from day one and we've just always evolved, you know what I mean? Whether it's with the artists, the, the artistry, the... You know, Jay's a genius. Like that, this is not nothing that yeah, never sure needs to be. You know what I'm saying? Discussed or you know, he saw a title way before you know probably any of us saw it. And he saw brand you know marketing way before any of us probably saw it. And he saw a lot of things beforehand, which is the reason why you know I'm there. So being able to be there and watch these ideas from its inception and watch him maybe ten years prior have an idea for this and then watching it come to fruition, fruition. And, and you know what I'm saying? It's for me, probably one of the most amazing things, you know, in the world to be a part of and just to be a helping hand. And sometimes I am helping hand, sometimes I'm just watching and I have nothing to do with it. You're a little but I'm more a part of the yeah, you You're a humble guy, just, you're a humble guy. But you have an imprint on a lot of things that people don't know about. I'm privy, because I'm part of the music industry, so I know about it, but you're very that, responsible man. for a lot of things that people don't know about. Appreciate that, man. I'm just, you know, again, 
I'm here, man. My sole purpose to get in the music business outside of my love and passion for music was, you know, to put out music or to help put out music that the world will love, that will move the world, that will keep people on the dance floor, that will help people get through their day, literally, mm. you know what I'm saying? And get through there and set their mood and to help shift and dictate the culture. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's what I'm in it for. It's you know, it's not about the money and it's not about the accolades, it's not about the fame, it's not about any of those things outside of like having a, a helping hand and a part of, you know, dictating what the culture is or the direction it's going in and making the music to help, you know, be the soundtrack to that culture. Another change is also we've seen a bunch of artists go to indie route. How do you feel about artists say like Chance the Rapper who winning Grammys now and yeah, I securing think deals. I think I, it's amazing. And I think that if you have the opportunity and if you have the resources and if you have the tenacity and you have the like, you know, drive to be able to, you know, hold out and not go to a label and not have the support and not have, you know, a hundred employees at your mercy and not have a big budget at your mercy, I think that you deserve everything that you get. You know what I mean? So you know, I don't believe everybody can everybody, do it. Everybody, yeah, it's not you know for I mean? everybody. But it's definitely, you know, he sets he sets the, the bar and the standard, you know, one of, you know, because there's other Mac, there's other yeah, people who have done it as well. But, you know, they set the bar and the standard of showing other artists you can, you know what I mean? And that's what I love and that's what I respect and that's what I, you know, I hold an honor with there is like, you can do this, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be harder, it's going to be tougher, it's going to be a bit of a more of a fight, you know what I mean? But if you can, it can be done. Shit, why not? Yeah. Your career's been really illustrious, been going oh, on for almost you, twenty years now. Um, is there anybody you haven't worked with that you wish you worked with or anybody you passed on? You're like, damn, I should have did that. Everybody has like a you know, some oh, I missed out like you heard. Yeah, I think we all miss out on stuff. I don't you know, um we miss out on stuff and you know, I I live with the motto like I live with no regrets. You know what I'm saying? I can't, I, I, I can't even harbor that kind of energy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But no. I mean, but I've missed out on stuff that I that I like and that I love. And um, you know, sometimes it's my fault. Sometimes it wasn't. Um, I guess probably one of the most recent or distinct was uh, probably Wiz. Mm -hmm. um, Jay had an attorney that worked with him at the time. Um, Jennifer Justice, love her name by the way. Yeah, Jennifer was, Justice. And you were a lawyer. And she was you, had, a lawyer. you had no choice but to be what? a lawyer with a name like and, that. And, and she knew Wiz really early on or was connected to him and she would like give me demos and I heard it and I thought it was dope and I, I, I never moved on it. Mm. And then you know Wiz became movie became, and, and that's great. Wiz became you know Wiz, I mean? yeah. But I mean like yeah and I'll admit it like there are times where you know people have come or sometimes you know people don't realize man even sometimes like it could really just be a bad day right like as music executives, sometimes we're listening to music a lot, <laughs> 30, 20 hours of the day, and you may catch somebody who will be like, yo, listen to my stuff, and you know, it could be cool, and you could really, like your mind, mentally, you could really be gone and, and not be there and not give it the attention that's needed, and people forget sometimes that you're human, and let's just say that happens, and then that artist four years later ends up becoming huge, and then looking at you like, I, you, yeah. you didn't get it, you didn't, <laughs> I played yeah. it for you and you didn't understand and it's like, yeah, sometimes that's the case, but then sometimes it's just like the timing wasn't right and maybe you weren't supposed to be with me, you know exactly. what I'm saying? Situation. Like that that happens as well sometimes, so, you know, Wiz is probably one of the, you know, the latest ones that are cool, you know. I think it worked but, uh, out for him. And yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. and again, yeah. no, you know, yeah. you know, but um, it happens, man, it happens to all of us. We all, the biggest music executives in the business Everybody hear music. stuff yeah. and just it just wasn't for them or they, you know, they slept on it. Now, if I'm going through a Lenny S playlist, what song is gonna jump out by what artist that's gonna shock me? I'm like, what are you doing listening to this? Honestly, my normal playlist is like old soul music. Okay, gotcha. uh, I, I wish to God that I had I mean, I'm happy with my life, and if you would have been executive during that era, but if I could have, but I, I could have grown up. up in another time, I, I wish I could have grown up in the Motown era. Mm -hmm. You know, I always talk about it. Me and uh, my man Dream were talking about it the other day, and just like, it, it just was uh, crazy and like uncanny of the the artists that they had on there, and the Rasta, and the like, Marvin Gaye, and Stevie Wonder, and you know, Rick James, and Temptations, and. Uh, like it's just what? It's a, yeah, it's a lot of talent. Robinson, like what? Diana Ross, off like over one era. So yeah. I wish. So so that's what I listen to a lot on my personal time. It's like 
you know, New Birth and stuff like that. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to give you two albums. I was going to say one. You're on the island for the rest of your life. You can take two albums. I know one of them is going to be a soul album. <laughs> what's the soul album and what's the rap album you take with you? Um, the soul album is like probably a Motown greatest hits. That's, that's good. And, that's good and then probably um, The Blueprint by Jay-Z. Blueprint by Jay-Z. Yeah. What's some of the best advice you've ever been given in life? Um, best advice is to really, 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 you know, not um, to really build my relationships and, and take them very seriously and, and return phone calls and emails and texts, you know, if I can, you know, because uh, that's what matters. And the relationships, for me, through experience, even not only from great advice, but yeah. through experience, the relationships have gotten me through everything. You through, always text me back. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, of course, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I get that a lot. And honestly, for me, it's kind of easy because it's sad, but so many people in our industry are assholes. That so when, when, you when, nice when, I, when I'm normal, I come off as like super nice, yeah. super responsive, great guy. And it's like, I am a good guy, right but I mean, I'm being normal. And just yeah. that, you know, those guys or girls, they weren't cool in high school. I was, <laughs> I was always all right. What's some of the worst advice you ever were given? You don't have to say about who, but who gave you Worst advice was like, uh, not, sort of like not following my instinct or, or, or my gut, you know what I mean? And, and going with taking something that is more, let's just let's say, by statistic or by okay. numbers or by, you know what I mean? And not going, going with what, you feel. Or what I really felt or feel. And um, me, I just have to roll on passion, you know what I'm saying? And the passion comes from my heart. Well, appreciate it. This is Best Seat in the House with Hovind Hilton. My guest Lenny S, check him out, inspiring and capturing the culture. And we are in the best seats in the house, FYI. All right. Appreciate it.